David, why were you sitting here in the dark? I suppose I should know better than to ask you to explain anything to me. Have you seen my car keys? No. Are you sure? Yes. You still want to send me away, don't you? All I want right now is to find my car keys. Well, you're not going to. I won't let you do it. Started. What? Where did it happen? Is he all right? I see. I see. Yes, yes, thank you. What happened? Oh, Roger's been in a car accident. His car went off the road. Is he badly hurt? They don't know yet. I knew it. I knew he shouldn't have done it. I knew he shouldn't have gone there. He could have been killed. He could have been killed. went to the car. Yes, I know that. Did you find out what caused the accident? Yeah. But it wasn't an accident, Roger. Are you sure? Positive. Absolutely no question about it. Well, that's about what it looks like. Well, what's it called? Bleeder valve. Do you know much about cars? You put the key in the ignition and the car starts. You turn it off and it stops. That's about it. Well, the brakes run on hydraulic fluid and there's a master cylinder under the hood. The fluid's in there. When you step in the brake pedal, what you're doing is forcing the fluid from the master cylinder to the separate cylinders on each brake. That's what stops the car, understand? Well, where does this thing come in? Uh, this piece, this bleeder valve was missing and left a little hole where it should have been. And every time you step on the brake pedal, you force the stream of hydraulic fluid out of that hole. Uh, do that a dozen times, there's no fluid left at all. And no brakes. Well, that's exactly what happened. The brakes were working fine until I got about halfway down the hill. That's the way it must have been planned. Now, Bill, I've got to be sure about this. Could this piece have come off by itself? I never heard of it happen. Is it hard to remove? All it takes is a couple of twists of a wrench or a pair of pliers. Then that's it. What? Devlin came to the house this afternoon and made arrangements for me to meet him in town tonight. What was to prevent him from going to the garage and tampering with my car to make sure I wouldn't make it down that hill? Well, it's, it's possible, but you can't prove it, neither can I. Not yet. Now, now slow down. Now, wait, do you think I'm going to leave it go with that? I was almost killed. I don't give a damn about proof. I'm going to go to Burke and make him admit it himself. Well, what are you going to do, beat it out of him with one arm? You two still here? I thought I told you to go home and get some rest. Well, I'm taking him home right now. Now, look, Bill. Now, look, there's nothing that can't wait until tomorrow. Except babies. 
I got one right now. Just can't wait to get into this world. <laughs> you think it's worth it? I'll tell you tomorrow. Thanks for everything, Doctor. Yeah. I'm afraid my son's emotional state doesn't concern me at the moment. I know that may sound callous to you, but what does concern me is that a man wanted me to meet him in town, knowing that I had to use my car to get there. I drove my car earlier this, today, Miss Winters, and the brakes were in perfect condition. When I went to keep the appointment, they failed. Do you know why they failed? Yes, and I also know why and who caused them to fail. But knowing it and proving it are quite different. That's why I wanted to talk to you. How can I help? You said you saw Burke Devlin standing in my garage earlier in the evening. Yes. He was looking at the car, is that what you said? Yes, he told me he was thinking of buying one like it. Hmm. He could scarcely have told you that he'd been tampering with my brakes. Any more than he could tell me that his suggestion that I meet him in town was an invitation to an accident. Are you sure it was Devlin? If I wasn't sure, I wouldn't be bothering you like this. I know it's late. And I know you're very tired, but it's very important that you remember everything that happened when you saw Burke in the garage. Well, I went to the station wagon to get some timetables. I was told they were in the glove compartment. Yes. And I heard a car door slam. Are you sure it was a door? Well, I think so. Why? This is a sketch of a part that was removed from my car. Now, it's called a bleeder valve. Now, that doesn't mean anything except that Devlin lifted the hood of my car and removed this part from what they call the master brake cylinder. Well, I'm afraid I don't know enough about cars. All you have to know is that this part, without it, it would cause the brakes to not function in about two minutes. Now, about this sound that you heard, could it have been the hood slamming down instead of the door? I suppose so. Mr. Collins, w would you need a special instrument to get that out of the car? Oh, a pair of pliers, that's all. Even a child could do it. A wrench? Yes, why? Well, when I went to the garage to see who it was, and I saw Mr. Devlin standing there, he was holding a wrench in his hand. <laughs> You saw Devlin standing at my car with a wrench in his hand and you didn't mention it? The man told me he, he found the, the wrench in the car seat and... Well, there was no reason in the world not to believe him. Do you still believe him? Look, I was going to say something about it to your sister when I came into the house, but then, as I said, it, it seemed so silly. And when I heard how friendly Mr. Devlin had been, well, I guess I just forgot about it. Even after you heard about this so-called accident? I didn't know it wasn't an accident until you told me about this valve thing. Well, for your information, Miss Winters, I drove the car earlier today and I did not leave a wrench on the front seat, nor did I return to the car and put one on the front seat. I'm so sorry. I suppose I should have said something, but... Well, is there anything I can do to... There's a great deal you can do. Please sit down. Now, in the first place, is there anything that you haven't mentioned other than this wrench? No. Are you sure? Yes, I'm quite sure. I heard the car door slam. Or the engine hood? Yes. And I went in the direction of the sound and I saw Devlin standing there. With the wrench? Yes. I told him I was looking for timetables. And well, then I asked him if you knew he was there, because I didn't know you'd patched up your quarrel then. Well, obviously we hadn't. What did he say to that? Well, he, he said that you didn't know, but that you wouldn't mind. And then he told me that he was looking at the car because he was thinking of buying one like it. Was he holding the wrench all this time? I don't... Wait a minute, I do remember. He threw it on a workbench. Yes, that's probably where he'd gotten it from. Now, about his hands, were they dirty? I don't know. I don't remember. Well, now, this could be very important. 
Oh, I really don't remember. I didn't pay any attention to his hands. Did he seem upset? Was he concerned that you found him there? No, I remember that very well. He seemed very calm and pleasant. He wasn't concerned at all. Hmm. Well, I see. Well, he's going to be concerned, very concerned. Don't go away, Miss Winters. Are you calling the police? I'm calling Burke's Hotel. Is Mr. Devlin there? Oh, he's not. All right, thank you. I'll call later. He's not there, but he will be soon. What are you going to do? I'm going to wait outside the hotel and wait for him to go in. And when he does, I'm going right up to his room and throw this whole thing right in his face. Wouldn't you be better off by getting the police? Oh, I intend to. But only after I have enjoyed seeing Burke and forcing him to tell me the truth. Now, you'd better get dressed. Me? What for? I don't want to give him the chance to deny that he ever had that wrench. I want you standing beside me all the time. I'm sorry, Mr. Collins, but I... I well, I you don't... just asked me if there was anything you could do to help. This is it. I know, but... Look, you won't have to go up to his room. Not unless it's absolutely necessary. You can wait in the lobby. But I may need to. Now, don't let me down now. Roger. Not a ghost, Burke. Very much alive. May I come in? Oh, well, yes, of course. What the devil happened to you? I hope you didn't wait too long for me at the bar. What happened? Oh, a slight accident, that's all. Slight accidents? Looks like you ran into a windmill. I survived. That's what counts. Uh, look, uh, why don't you sit down? Can I get you a drink or something? I don't think, thanks. Uh, how is the arm? Is it broken or what? Oh, it's just a sprain. But it could have been a great deal worse. What about that business deal? What business deal? Oh, don't tell me you've forgotten. You came up to the house today and told me to come in town tonight and have a discussion of a business deal with you, didn't you? Oh. Oh, yes, yes, that. Look, are you sure you don't want a drink? Well, maybe there wasn't any business deal at all. <laughs> Couldn't we talk about it tomorrow, huh? Well, no, I want to talk about it now. After all, I made you wait at the Blue Whale. But it's not important. Look, I'm uh, going to have a drink. Will you join me? You did expect me to come to the Blue Whale, didn't you? I waited for you, sure. How long? <laughs> what difference does it make? An hour? Two hours, five minutes, or maybe not at all. Roger, I was in the bar for an hour and a half, okay? Now, baby, you better tell me what you're driving at. What about that business deal? Forget about the business deal. Roger, there's something on your mind. I want to know what it is. What happened to that smile, Burke? I thought you and I were going to be friends again. Let bygones be bygones, isn't that what you said? Roger, it's after midnight. You didn't come up here to discuss a business deal that could very well wait until morning. Oh, but I'm interested. Let's have that drink. And then you tell me all about it. Well, that's about it. I thought if you talked to your sister, something could be worked out. Did you really think that I could talk Elizabeth into selling the cannery? 
Oh, I don't know, but I'm always looking for new investments. And that's why you wanted me to drive into town to discuss this. That's it. Burke, you're a liar. Am I? My sister would never dream of selling that cannery, and you know it. Do I? Why don't you admit it, Burke? There wasn't any business deal, was there? You didn't expect me to show up at the Blue Whale. Tonight, tomorrow, or any time. I waited for you. Sure you did, to make it look good. You probably put on a big show about wondering where I was. What are you getting at? Where did you go when you left my house? After you decided we would meet in town? I came back here to change my clothes. Aren't you forgetting something? Wasn't there something else? I don't think so. Now look, Roger. Oh, what about my car? Don't tell me you've forgotten about making a personal inspection of my car. Maybe you'd better get to the point, Roger. You tried to kill me. I tried what? I got halfway down that hill, Burke. Halfway down before the brakes stopped working. And you think that I... No, I don't think anything. I know it. Now listen. No, Roger. you listen to me. After you left that house, you went to the garage. You lifted the hood of my car and you removed the valve from the brake cylinder. Then you went to the blue whale and you sat and you waited. Because you thought that I wasn't going to show up. You're out of your mind. You're not going to get away with it. I think you better get out of here, go home and get some rest. Not until you tell me the truth. There's nothing to tell. I didn't touch your car. This is Mr. Collins. There's someone waiting for me in the restaurant. Send them up, will you please? You'd like to rip Collinwood apart, wouldn't you? You don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about your absolute hypocrisy. You arrived at Collinwood protesting total friendship for me and my family. While in effect your visit was only a prelude to my accident. I had nothing to do with your car. I'd like to hear you say that again. Right now. Come in, Miss Winters. What does she have to do with this? Suppose we find out. Roger, I've had it up to here with this business. Do you know what he's accusing me of doing? Speak up, Miss Winters. Don't be frightened. Yes. Do you still deny that you tampered with the brakes on my car? Are you here to uh, witness my confession? Is that why she's here? When was the last time you saw Miss Winters? Why? I asked you a question, Burke. When did you see her last? When I was removing the uh, whatchamacallit from your brake cylinder, naturally. Oh, you remember, don't you? Uh, remember you handed me a tool and I... All right, Roger. I've had enough of this. Why? Did you remember something? When's the last time you saw Mr. Devlin? In your garage. Sure, I was in the garage. We were having a little talk, weren't we? I was looking at your car, wondering whether to buy one like it. Looking at it, Roger, not tampering with it. I checked, Burke. That valve could be easily removed from the brake cylinder with a simple tool. A pair of pliers or... or a wrench. Did he have any tools in his hand when you saw him in the garage? Well... Roger, I'm warning you. You are making a mistake. He had a wrench in his hand, didn't he? Yes, he did. I didn't tamper with your car. Is that clear enough? Is Miss Winters lying or did you have a wrench in your hand? Sure, I had one. I found it on the front seat of the car. Isn't that what I said to you? Yes. I was looking at the upholstery. 
and the dashboard. And I saw it lying there on the seat. I picked it up, she came along, and I threw it on the workbench. I drove the car yesterday. There was no wrench on the front seat. Then someone must have put it there. Did you see me fool with his brakes? No. Did you see me do anything with that wrench except hold it and throw it aside? No. Of course she didn't. By the time she arrived, you were already through. Miss Winters, get him out of here. What are you going to do? Throw me out, Burke? Now, just a minute, Roger. You're not dealing with a kid you railroaded ten years ago, and don't you forget it. Nobody railroaded you. If you start pushing me around again, you'll wish you never got up from that car. Don't think I'm a can... big boy now. I don't get scared when the people up at Collinwood start making noise. Are you finished? No. Not quite. Miss Winters, I don't know how he dragged you into this mess, but I want to give you some advice. I want to tell you exactly what I told you the night you got here. Get on the train. Go home. Get away from here while you can. Well, that didn't take long. Well, not much to see except this. Hello, young fellow. What's your name? What's the matter? Cat got your tongue? David, what are you doing down here? It's all right. He's probably just impressed with the dignity of my badge. <laughs> Just a minute. This for you, Jonas. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Right, Harry. Did you reach him? Great. What did he say? Uh -huh. But he's going to check. I see. Well, how long did he think it'd take? What else did he say? Well, that's all I can expect. Yes, we'll have something. We've got something here, a wrench with some prints on it. David, don't touch it. Now, will you just sit tight, Harry? All right. I'll be bringing it back to the office in a couple of minutes. All right, okay. Goodbye. Well, I guess there's nothing else for me to do around here. What are you going to do now, go see Burke? I sure am. In the meantime, I'd like you to think about what I said. Think of anybody who might have a grudge against you. No matter how wild the idea may seem. David! Don't touch! I knocked it over by mistake. David, you stupid! It's all right, he didn't know. But he's got fingerprints all over it now. Here, David. Here you go. I'm sorry, it was an accident. You know what you did with that accident? I said I'm sorry! It's all right. Just add it to the couple of prints we've got. At least we'll know how his got here. Well, I better be going. Yes, yes, it is, Mr. Devlin. Hello, has any mail arrived for me today? Oh, good. Yes, I see. Thank you. What? When? Oh, yes. Oh, well, yes, thank you very much. Well, that does it. What happened? Did the report come? No, but the sheriff did. I had a search warrant. I went through my hotel room. 
Well, he and I are going to have it out over that one. That seems to be my day, Bronson. Not only the sheriff, but the clerk tells me they caught someone trying to sneak into my room. A thief? No. A little boy. I'll be in touch. Come on, young man. In you go. Go on, march. You know, you were lucky you weren't picked up for vagrancy. I didn't do anything. Well, how long were you hanging around out in that hotel lobby? I was just in there. <laughs> well, wouldn't it be better to sit in here where you can have a Sunday at the same time? I don't want anything. Oh, of course you do. Now, you get up on one of these stools while I go back there and see what I can cook up. You're David Collins, aren't you? Yes. Well, your dad comes in here for coffee quite often. Did you know that? No. Well, do you want nuts and whipped cream on it, too? I don't care. <laughs> well, I wish all my customers were like you. You know, as a matter of fact, I was hoping your father would be coming in tonight. Kind of anxious to talk to him. Do you know where he is? At the office, I guess. Well, don't you know? I told you. At the office. Oh. Well, how'd you get into town, anyway? Where's my father? Well, will he know where to find you? Uh-huh. Say, do you think I could work the fountain sometime? <laughs> sure, David. Say, when do you think your father will be coming in for you? Oh, uh, pretty soon. <laughs> he is coming, isn't he? I, I told you. You sure did. Okay. But don't gobble it. I have to go make a phone call and tell my father where I am. Wow, how does it taste? Say, it's pretty good with whipped cream. <laughs> you bet it is. Would you like another one? No, thanks. I better be going. Say, David, how would you like to try making one yourself? Could I? <laughs> sure. You go right around that counter, and I'll give you a full set of instructions. Looking for someone? <laughs> no. Only a customer. You know, it's getting pretty lonely in here. Oh, now let me show you how to use that ice cream I know how. Okay, go right ahead. Oh, very good. Say, David, you want to know something funny? The hotel clerk just told me that you were trying to get into Burke Devlin's room. That's not true. The door was open. I was just looking. Any particular reason? Hey, where are you going? I don't want the Sunday. David, I'm sorry. I wasn't trying to be nosy. I just wanted to make conversation. I think I'll go back to the lobby. David, you know, it is getting pretty lonely in here, and that Sunday's going to go to waste. Say, why don't you go back there and make another Sunday for me, and then you and I will have a party. I'll tell you what. You can even put hot fudge on it. Is that a deal? Okay. as long as I could. He was hanging around in the lobby. I thought you'd never get here. Well, I have a few other things to do besides chasing all over town after my son. Where is he? He was behind the counter. Oh, he was right here making this Sunday. 
Well, he couldn't have gotten out those doors that fast. Well, he was here just a minute ago, believe me. If he does rematerialize, do me a favor. Don't call me again. Well, how will he get home? Well, he found his own way into town, didn't he? I'm sure he can solve that problem, too. But it's dark now. Well, all right. If he does show up, try checking me at the office. But tell him to warn, warn himself, that he's in for a good, solid lecture. Mr. Collins. Well, what now? Did you know that David tried to get into Burke Devlin's room? No. Well, I asked him why. He said he was just curious. Curious about what? He didn't say. Oh, Maggie, if you do see David, the minute you see him, get a hold of him and, and call me. What are you supposed to be, a doorstop? I've been waiting to talk to you. Well, if you're a salesman, I don't want a thing. I've been waiting for almost two hours. Well, in that case, you'd uh, better come in. I admire persistence. Do you know what that word means, David? How did you know my name? Well, you're a very famous fellow. The disappearing David Collins. The boy who vanished in the restaurant while his father was looking for him. Hey, tell me something, David. Where were you hiding? In the phone booth. <laughs> hey, a born spy, huh? Hey, tell me something else. Why did you try to sneak into my room? I didn't. Okay, whatever you say. Go on, make yourself comfortable. Sit down. I was walking along your floor looking to see which room was yours. And then the door was open. Oh, yes, yes. The chambermaid was inside. I just looked inside. I didn't steal anything. Are you going to call my family and tell them I'm here? Do you want me to? No. Then I won't. Promise? Cross my heart. Hey, Dave, come on, come on, sit down. I'll fix you a Burke Devlin special. That's a concoction you'll really like, huh? Then we can talk. I bet there's a phone in there. David, let me tell you something. I've broken lots of promises in my time to doctors, lawyers, firemen, even an Indian chief. But to a nine-year-old boy, never. By the way, uh, if you want to wash up or anything, uh, it's right through there. I'm okay, thanks. To your mother. She and I were very close friends. Did you know that? No. Well, we were. Your father, your mother, and I. Three pals together. But that was a long time ago. Before they were married. I thought you hated my father. Try a drink. My father hates you. Go on, try it. See if you like it. It's good. Yeah, it's a couple of different fruit juices. I used to love it when I was a kid. Okay, David, talk. Hmm? Well, come on, you, uh, you, you didn't come down here for uh, anything but a talk, did you? Let's see what you have to say. Oh, it's not important. I think I'll go. Oh, no, no, no. You came all the way down here and waited two hours out there not to tell me that it's um, not important. It wasn't. How'd you get here, anyway? 
a hitchhike. Hey, you're quite a guy. Hey, come on, Demi. T tell, tell me what's on your mind, hmm? You're different. What do you mean? The way my father used to talk about you. I thought you'd be... I don't know. Oh, you mean with horns and a tail and fire coming out of my mouth? <laughs> oh, Davy, come and look at this. Come on, come on. I, I want to show you something. Look at those clouds. Oh, boy. We're going to have a granddaddy of an electrical storm. Now, don't you think you ought to go home before it gets started? Okay. No objections anymore? No, not if you'll go with me. It's a deal. <laughs> now, you're going in and get washed up so your aunt Elizabeth won't think I dragged you through a mud puddle. I can wash when I get home. Hey, hey, you go in there and wash. Do like I say, now beat it. Everybody see by getting you home. Mr. Devlin? Burke. You know something, Burke? You're nice. I mean, really nice. Thank you, Mr. Collins. David. <laughs> <laughs> David. This is Mr. Devlin. Hey, would you set my car around front, please? Thank you. Okay, Dave. Let's get going. You forget something? I oh my coat. Come on, your family will be worried. Yes, I did, David. Can we go back? Back where? But to your hotel room. I think I left something there. Oh, we better not. But it's important. Well, so it's getting you home. What was it? I'll, uh, I'll get it for you, okay? Please, I have to go back. Please! Sorry, David. What did you forget? Then you say you brought the valve in here? Yes, and I locked it in this drawer, and then I went downstairs to tell your sister about it. What did you do with the key? Well, I put it in my pocket. I found out later, though, that this dresser has a maid in Carolyn's room, and the keys are identical. Where was David all this time? I don't know. But when I got back here, the valve was gone, and so was David. I see. I'm terribly sorry. Yes, Miss Winters. Are you sure it was the valve for my car? You showed me the drawing of it yourself. Yes, it's true. I knew David was a bright boy. I didn't know he'd be able to do a thing like this. He gave me a magazine, insisting it was a present. I think you'll find the answer in here. Breakdown diagram of an automobile master brake cylinder. How to take care of it. To take it apart and put it together. It's funny, Miss Winters. I, I don't know whether to thank you or to hate you for this. I know how you must feel. Do you? It's true. David and I had arguments. I never liked the boy, but I never pretended I did. 
but to deliberately. We never know what monsters we create, do we? David, perhaps someone's found David. <laughs> Boy, what are you doing here, Burke? I brought your boy home. Go on in, David, before you change your mind. David, where have you been? Where did you find him? Wandering. Wandering where? I heard that he tried to get in your room, Burke. Is that true? Is it true, David? Boy's frightened. Answer me, David. He should be frightened. Have you been with Mr. Devlin all this time? If you mean for the last 15 minutes, yes. I was driving through town. I, uh, I saw him walking along, I picked him up. The storm was getting ready to break. When he told me who he was, I brought him up here. All right, thank you very much. Go inside, David, I want to talk to you. I said, come in here, and I mean now. trying to tell me that that valve wasn't hidden in your room? It's a lie. She lied about me. I suppose me. you know I could have been killed. I didn't have anything to do with it. Then why did you run away? Because of Miss Winters. She made me run away. Why would she make you do that? Because she hates me. She told all those lies about me. She said I fooled with the brakes so the car wouldn't work. If it wasn't true, you could have stayed here and told me so. Wouldn't have believed me anyway. She's a grown up. I'm only a kid. You'd always believe her. David, why would Miss Winters want to lie about a thing like that? Stop because. that, David. Look at me. What earthly reason would she have for saying that she found the valve in your room if it wasn't true? Because she maybe tried to kill you herself. Oh, stop that, David! I bet she went out to the car when no one was looking and took that valve. When you got hurt, you got scared. I said stop it! It was her father, not me. Empty your pockets. I asked you to empty your pockets. Did you hear me or shall I do it for you? throw it away? Is that the answer? You got so frightened that you decided to throw it away? Where's Aunt Elizabeth? I want to talk to her. She won't help you now, David. Get that through your head. When a boy tries to kill his own father, there's no help for him. No help at all. Look at this. I said, look at this. It's your magazine, isn't it? I don't know. You used it, didn't you? You used it to learn how to tamper with my brakes. Where did you get it? It doesn't matter. I want to know where you got it. I got it exactly where you left it, in Miss Winter's room. I never put it there. Now listen, David. She, she just wants to get me in trouble. You have an answer for everything, don't you? It doesn't matter to you who takes the blame for this, does it? I didn't do it. She made up the whole thing about it. But we'll soon find out about this. What are you still doing here? I'm talking to Miss Winters, waiting to say goodbye. All right, goodbye. Would you step in here, please? All right, Miss Winters, there he is. He says, nothing you've said is true. David, it's pointless to lie. We've already been through this. Now tell me, did you find that valve in his room? Of course I did. Exactly where was it? I've already told you, in his dresser drawer under some clothes. I would never have found it if I hadn't been looking for a letter that was taken That's from me. That's why you're making it up. Because I took your stupid letter. I'm not making up a thing, David, and you know it. It's 
a lie. Everything you said about me is a lie. You just want to get me in trouble. Well, I don't care what you say. I never had that valve. I never took it. Now leave me alone. David, it's useless to pretend. Are you trying to tell me that I lied? You did, didn't you? You did. How many times did you tell me that you hated your father? That he wanted to send you away and you were going to get even with him? I never meant it. I didn't mean it. Well, you meant to go to that garage, take the valve from the car. Maybe you didn't know how serious it could be, but just the same you I could... didn't take that valve. If you don't believe me, look over here. This is all the stuff that was in my pockets. Well, then you must have thrown it away. I didn't! Excuse me. I thought I asked you to leave. I know, but I, I thought I might be able to help. Is uh, this what you've been looking for? Where did you get this? This is the valve you've been looking for, isn't it? You know very well it is. All I know, Roger, is that a part was missing from your car after the accident. Whether it was that or something else, I couldn't say. Don't play games with me, Burke. I was almost killed when you removed this valve from my car. Me? But I thought you said... I'm not interested in that right now. We've been trying to find this valve ever since my car went off the road. I know. And you also told the sheriff to make a thorough search of my room. Well, perhaps he didn't search thoroughly enough. Perhaps you stay here. This concerns you, young man. This concerns you very much. All right, Burke. I want an answer. Where did you get this? I found that valve, Roger. Exactly where you would have found it if you'd have used your energies looking instead of accusing me of trying to kill you. Just tell me where it was. David? Why don't you tell your father? But didn't he have it? No. All right, David. I asked you, Burke. It was on the road. On the road? Yes. Uh, as I explained, I found David wandering through town, and I decided to bring him up here. Well, never mind about that. Well, let's face it, Roger. I never would have found that thing if it hadn't been for David. We were driving the car up the hill toward the house. We passed the place where the accident occurred. It's a dangerous curve, Roger. You really should build a retaining wall. Where was the valve? David told me that he hadn't tampered with the brakes. And I believed him. Since I knew I wasn't responsible either, the only other thing it could have been was that it fell off by itself. That's not possible. Anything is possible, Roger. But if you don't believe me, why don't you ask your son? He was there. Wasn't it on the road, David? Yes. Why didn't you tell me this before? He I... didn't have a chance, Roger. You didn't give the boy a chance. Isn't that right, Dave? Yes. You were yelling so much I couldn't tell. David, I want you to wait outside with Mr. Devlin. I never had that thing, Father. You heard him. It was on the road. Take him outside, Burke. Whatever you say. Come along, David. <laughs> Do you believe that story? I don't know. Look at this, Miss Winters. Is this what you found hidden in my son's room? Yes. Well, Davy, what do you think? Did he believe me? I don't know. Why did you lie? No. That's an old habit of mine. When the enemy is moving in, you uh, try to keep them stirred up as much as possible. Your father giving you a bad time in there, wasn't he? Yes. I may have saved your neck. You know that, don't you? I mean, I had the valve right in my pocket. I wasn't even sure what I was going to do with it, and... Boom! Well, it's just lucky I didn't tell him the truth. What do you mean? Oh, come on, David. This is your friend, Burke. I helped you because I liked you. Well, I'm not so sure I did the right thing. Your father could have been killed. Uh -huh.